how do you make digital paper and how long does it take to make a digital paper collection? What programs are you using and is it very difficult to make your own digital printable paper or can I perhaps also make my own at home? Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel Drunk Journal Art. Nice to see you here. Today I would like to start a new series here on my YouTube channel where I'm showing you step by step how I make my digital printable papers for my Etsy shop. Perhaps you know my other series about my 365 days journal that's also available here on my YouTube channel. There I had asked you um, to ask me some questions, things that you always wanted to know about me. And normally I'm answering those questions in my 365 days journal uh, by creating a page and then talking to you and answering those questions. But you have also asked some questions about how to make digital printable paper and and also questions about my Etsy shop, my YouTube channel, um, what I'm doing for a living and all that stuff. So I have decided to take those questions from the other series to this series because I think it's yeah more interesting for you to watch my process um, when I can show you the things directly than when I have my 365 days journal on my desk creating a page and answering the questions and it's I think also easier to understand when you can see directly what I'm doing. So let's go right into it and let's create a digital printable paper collection together. Lynn has asked me, how do you come up with your ideas for your digitals? So this question is not so easy to answer because it's always a little bit different. It can be that I yeah, have an idea in my mind that comes overnight. <laughs> <laughs> and in the morning I'm yeah drinking my coffee and suddenly I'm jumping to my computer and trying to bring this idea to my Photoshop program or it can happen that I have a special paper in my hand that has a pattern or a texture or something like that that brings me to an idea. Um, in this case, for this special paper collection that we are going to create here in this video series, I was, yeah... <laughs> How can I say that? It was a really, really heartwarming and really funny story at the same time. So let me try to reconstruct that for you. Um, in the beginning of this year, um, I got a message from my junk journal friend Kerstin. She is House of Chaos Art on Instagram. I will link her down below in the description box because she has lots to do with this project. Um, she messaged me on Facebook Messenger. And she has asked me if I can make a digital printable paper collection with some fairies in a very special style. If you look at all of these things that come from Kerstin, you can already guess that she is a really grungy creator. Her art is really special, really coffee-ish, brownish, grungy, vintage, old and that stuff. And she has asked if I can make um, a fairy paper collection that's not this typical fairy paper collection, but a little bit different. And then I realized how I love her work. I mean, I'm a really, really big fan of her work and everything that she's doing. And then I came to the idea to ask her if we want to... Um, create this paper collection together. She was a little bit shocked in the first minutes because um, she couldn't understand how we can do that. And she said to me that she feels really honored to do that with me. But I said, you are the very best person to do this because this idea is in your head. And why not throwing our ideas together and putting our heads together to create this paper collection. So that's also, of course, a way um, how I make my digital printable papers. I'm mostly doing that alone, but sometimes I'm also collaborating with other people. I also did that in the past with some people and um, that was always really, really much fun. And it's also a really, yeah, 
a really good way to learn more about all of these digital things and that stuff. So um, we have the problem, I mean, Kerstin and I, we have the problem that we are not in the same place. She is in Germany and I'm here in Austria. So first of all, we had to discuss how we can manage everything. So um, she has sent some journals to me. She has sent this envelope to me. I haven't opened it until now because I want to do that with you together. Um, and while I'm showing you this from the outside, I would like to tell you how we want to do this whole thing. So um, there will be a flip through of all of these journals in this series, not in this video, but in the other videos that are coming in the future within this series, because otherwise this video would be way too long. But I would like to give you a little sneak peek of what you can expect when you, yeah, watch this series and look at Kerstin's creations. So this is, I'm always so sad that you can't feel it. I mean, it's always, I'm sitting here and I can touch this and I can feel, ooh, I can feel, um, yeah, this smooth thing of this cover, for example, and I'm always so sad that you can't feel this. This is so cool, but perhaps you can see how much effort she has put into this this cover for example and in everything this is so cool and yeah so um the things that are in these journals here i want to use to um, put to my scanner or perhaps i will also make photos of this um, and then i want to turn that into my digital printable paper collection in this video i would like to create some backgrounds for my digital printable paper collection because when i see this i have the feeling that we have to turn these gorgeous things here into some digital backgrounds that we can print over and over again and where we can then on the print try out some different techniques or something like that <sighs> I can imagine this as a really, really cool journaling page as well. So we will go to my scanner in a, th in a second and I will show you um, how I scan my things um, if I has, have something physical like this. So um, it's not always a good idea to put everything to your scanner. I have experienced that in the past, um, that some things are not so... Um, handy to scan or that the result when you scan it is not so good than when you take a photo so it can happen um, that I come back from my scanner and I've changed my mind and then I will take some photos but I will also show you that process so but um, I'm always doing it like this first of all I go to my scanner and I'm trying to scan that what I want to use for my printable because scanning is of course the easier way you put the thing to your scanner close the thing the scanner and then you press the button scan and then you have your scan to make a photo and have the right angle um, over your page that is way more difficult and way more effort to do so first of all I'm trying and uh, I'm trying to scan and I'm looking how does the scan look and if the scan is okay then I'm using the scan of course and if not I'm going with photos but I will show you also the difference between that um, I guess we have some things here that are not so good for a scan but yeah I will go into detail later so I think I will take everything here what, what I have here and we will go into the other room to my scanner I will take you with me <laughs> This is a really, 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 I mean, big bunch of things that we have to use or that we can use. So let's go to the scanner and let's do this. Okay, so here I'm at my scanner. I'm using the HP OfficeJet Pro 8720. Um, this printer can print, of course, <laughs> and it can scan and make copies of your documents and photos and that stuff. So I thought we are going to start with this thing here. So this is also one of the journals from Kerstin. And I would like to try to turn this cover here into the first of my background pages. For that, 
I'm searching for approximately the middle of this journal and I'm putting that here directly to the scanner glass. This way I can um, close the scanner way more easy than when I would have this whole stuff on one side. Um, I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? If you have too much on one side, then it's not so easy. So find approximately the middle, make sure that everything lays totally flat. And then we are carefully closing this. And now I'm going to my computer and as you can hear, perhaps, hopefully you can hear, hear it, um, this thing starts to scan. I will show you the finished scans later on because my computer is there in the other corner of the room. So this little sign means it is finished. So we can see if we have something else that we can turn into another background. So let's just go through this here. So I think this part, for example, and also this here on the bottom would be really, really great. This little cluster would be perfect for a background as well. So I'm taking this page, putting this here to the scanner glass, closing this. Then I'm going to my computer and press the button that it starts. Okay, so I hopefully... The video is not too shaky. I'm in my caravan here. So my printer is in my caravan as well. And <laughs> yeah, when I walk here from the scanner to the computer, uh, then sometimes it happens that everything is shaking a little bit because the caravan is not so sturdy. Um, but hopefully it's okay for you. Um, and it's not too extremely. So I'm trying to move really, really quiet and and calm <laughs> so um i think this would be gorgeous as well so let's let's try this page and i think i will to, uh, do two versions one with this paper i guess kerstin has made this with some uh, bubbles and paint and this is also really really gorgeous so yeah let's first try this one here And when we have that, we can flip this open and perhaps I turn it the other way around so that I have more space here. And we are going to do the same thing. Okay, so I will go on with some more pages from this journal and also from the other ones. And first of all, I'm making my scans this is also so gorgeous. I love this paper and this page. And she has made everything by herself. This is so special. Really, really cool. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm going on with scanning different pages. I will later on show you the result on my computer compared to the original page. And by the way, I'm scanning on 300 dpi um, as photo i mean your scanner can also scan as a document um, so when you put a document to your scanner then you normally press scan document but, uh, but in this case i'm um, saying to my scanner that he shall um, scan a photo because this yeah the colors come out better when you say scan as a photo so i will just scan in some more pages and then we will see on my computer. Okay, so here we go. Now you can compare a photo um, that you can see here that I have taken with daylight on my desk with the scan. This is the scan. So I have put the photos and the scans next to each other so that you can compare directly what is going on here. As you probably can see, the colors are really, really different um, on the scan than on the photo. So what you can see with your eye is very different to the, to the scan sometimes. And now my um, next thing to do is I have to adjust the colors. So I will put the scans into my Photoshop program on my computer and then I have to adjust the colors. I have to bring more contrast to them and I also have to make them a little bit more cohesive than they are here on my scan. 
Um, I did that without the camera. So yeah, the reason is, uh, so here you can see that I have made one file per background, um, but I'm not showing you how I am doing this color adjustment because it takes me so long. As you perhaps know, I'm a self-taught designer, so I've learned everything by myself, by trial and error and watching YouTube tutorials. And um, this takes me so long um, that I didn't want to bore you, so <laughs> otherwise this video would be forever. So, um, yeah, when I have one file um, for every background that I want to make, then I can start to arrange the other things. In this case, I'm first putting a frame around this whole page so that it looks more like a journaling page. For me, those frames are really, really important to make a page look, yeah, some kind of distressed and not this normal edge. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I really often do that. And I'm doing this here on um, every of my background uh, backgrounds. And... Um, I'm changing the look of the frame a little bit so that it doesn't look um, the same on each page. I personally don't like that. So I'm playing around a little bit um, until I have all of these frames here. Um, some of you have asked how um, this layering in Photoshop um, can be done. So in this case, it's a little bit uh, difficult because the pages that Kerstin has created and that I have scanned are my first layer. But on this first layer, there already are different layers on top. So the papers, the scraps that she has glued there or these little um, pieces of fabric are already visible layers. And everything that I want to put on top now can be on top of course, but I have to make sure that it looks like it is part of Kerstin's design. So that's what I'm trying here um, by adding some um, more things that I have in my mind that fit later to the whole paper collection. There's also a big thing with copyright, of course, in the right corner here, oh, sorry, it has gone, but you have seen it a second ago. There was a picture um, that I was not sure if it is copyright free. So I have to put something on top or cut that out to make sure that everything um, that Kerstin has created is later on copyright uh, with a, uh, okay with the copyright so that there are no uh, copyrights on the things that we have on this um, design here. So um, I have speed up my process here because this part takes me really, really long. So you can see here um, my original process with um, it's um, eight times faster than my original process. And it's only a part of the process, because if I would show you everything that I'm doing, every single step, this video would take forever. So the next thing that I'm doing is um, before I finish my pages with some finishing touches like splatters or something like that, I'm printing everything out to see how it looks and if it looks good when I print it out in, the, in this state. When I had printed this out, I realized that my printer made some really strange things. I have some white lines on the top and the bottom of the page, but in this case, I don't care about that. So this was a fail of my printer. But for this test printing, it's totally okay because I only want to make sure if the colors are correct and if everything is crisp and clear. And I can also in this state see if I want to change anything. I will add some finishing touches like splatters or something like that to those pages. I will change them up a little bit. And this test printing helps me a lot to see what I want to add or what I want to change on my final result. And the next step will be to put everything together for my Etsy shop. So, of course, I have to list it in my shop and that's what I'm going to do next so that this item is available for you and everyone else who likes it. Here you can see a quick insight of my uploading and listing process on Etsy. 
So I have to go to my Etsy account to create a new item for my shop and then I have to upload all of the preview pictures, you know, those pictures with this watermark and of course the files that you later on can download if you want to purchase this item. Um, these are zip folders that you have to extract and then you can print those files. I also have to um, fill in this description box of the item and some parameters so that the search engine of Etsy can handle this item. And later on we will see this item here in my shop. It looks like this now as you know it from Etsy. You can um, yeah, see the preview pictures now and see every single page um, and what you can expect if you want to purchase this item. You can read the description box of course and you can get to know everything that you need to know if you want to have it. The link to this item is down below this video in the description box so if you want to have these pages that we have created today then please check out the info box of this video. And yeah, I hope you liked it, if, even if it was this kind of speed up process video, but the real process would of course be way too long for such a video. I hope you could get an imagination on how to make digital printable paper and list that to Etsy. Thank you very much for watching. I hope we will see the next time with the next video of this series. I'm really excited what will come there. Stay creative, stay healthy. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.